Okay, welcome to this little conundrum. Um, Alright, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to run through the setup. And um, in the next video, I'm going to show you something very interesting. This setup is extremely simple. That is what we have there. So uh, we're just going to use this diagram and run through the whole shebang so you know where everything is placed for what I'm going to show you in the next video. Uh, Alright, so we'll start off with our capacitor. In this case, 200 microfarad, 300 volt AC cap, uh, which is C1 here. Across that cap, we have a 100 ohm resistor, which is R1, and that is placed on the other side of the chockey block. So a cap is going into this chockey block and our resistor is across it. All the grounds for my equipment um, are placed on the ground side of course because they all share a common ground. However, in the next video we will be scoping all different parts of the circuit. Um, as I now have my scope hooked up through a UPS and a 24 volt battery bank and we will be able to isolate our scope from uh, the ground of the mains that every other component or piece of equipment I have runs from. So all our equipment here runs a common ground, there's no ground isolation except with the scope when we're running it from the UPS, totally disconnected from the grid. But that's in the next video. And you're going to want to see the next video. Um, Alright, so all our grounds at the moment um, are on the common ground side. Our transformer is a 2 to 1 transformer. Um, that is what we are using. That little number over there. That simply comes out of one of these. So it knocks the 240 down to 120. I have hundreds of these. They were set over sent over to Australia with the um, incorrect plugs so my boss at the time said I could have the whole lot so I took them and um, I also have two other different sorts uh, hundreds of those as well so that's the transformer we're using um, now our signal generator as you can see here is going to the what would be the 120 volt side or the one of the 2 to 1 transformer and what we are calling the secondary side is going through an LED and then back to the ground side of the system which is our LED there we have a protection diode um, across the ground and the input and this is in case the LED blows out I don't get high voltage spikes going through my signal generator it will simply form a current loop hopefully so the uh, 100 ohm resistor is across the capacitor um, and we know where our protection diode is and our LED the transformer shares a common ground between the primary and the secondary winding which of course is that um, which is the black one the yellow one is the primary red one is the secondary in this case so yellow wire here is the primary and that is the one that is hooked to the signal generator the red wire is the secondary going through the LED and back to um, ground via the resistor and capacitor. As you can see there, we have a whole lot of grounds on one side of that resistor. Alright, these two multimeters you see here, this one is reading current. That is placed between the signal generator and before the junction of the protection diode and the primary of the transformer. So it goes right there, which I haven't drawn in the circuit. 
The second multimedia C is reading DC voltage that is across the capacitor resistor combo. The ground side once again of the multimeter is on this side with the rest of the grounds and the positive is here. And at the moment we can see we have 250 millivolts across our 100 ohm resistor. Now this also confirms that our current reading is correct. We have 250 microamps across 100 ohm resistor gives us 25 microvolts. So our meters are reading correctly. Okay, our scope up here. Both of the common grounds for the scope once again are here. The blue channel is across the resistor capacitor combo and the yellow channel is across the secondary coil. Um, in the next video we will be removing the blue one from the resistor and placing it across the primary coil because there's something very interesting um, with these two coils happening. And the transformers as you can see are actually the windings for the primary and secondary are wound together around the same former um, which of course uh, uses the uh, same core and which makes the explanation harder what you will see in the next video as to what is happening between the primary and secondary and there's a big difference even though they are wound together okay so that's basically our setup um, at the moment we're using 250 microamps which is confirmed by our 25 millivolts across our 100 ohm resistor and the signal generator is set to 3 volts peak to peak and our offset is 1.5 volts <coughs> so we are sending 3 volt pulses um, into our primary coil <coughs> our duty cycle at the moment is set on 4% and I am using 50 ohm impedance as well <coughs> so um, 100 oh, sorry 1 kilohertz frequency at the moment uh, so that's pretty much it for the signal generator what we're sending into it our scope here, you can see we have been through the scope probes already so we don't need to go through that placing again I will tell you when we change them like I said the blue trace is the voltage across the 100 ohm resistor and the yellow one is across our uh, secondary coil at the moment <coughs> I'll shift that in the next video so it's not in the road somehow. So 3.36 volts max across the secondary coil, 928 millivolts RMS, a zero mean voltage. Channel 2, the mean voltage is 26 millivolts, which is extremely close to our 25 millivolts our meter is reading. And channel 2 has a peak to peak voltage of 12 millivolt, which is a very slight ripple <coughs> across our resistor capacitor, <coughs> which in itself is extremely interesting because we are still getting a very strong pulse um, across our primary and secondary coil. So that's where we're going to leave this video. Um, like I said at the moment, it's a 4% duty cycle with a 3 volt pulse going into the circuit. A little LED is going quite nicely. So we have um, 3 volts at an average current of 250 microamps. 
and that is what's running that little LED at the moment. Alright, so um, next video, we're going to have a look at the uh, very interesting effect when we drop that duty cycle down even further. So, um, the whole idea is to keep that LED running, keep the whole circuit running, um, but what we want to do is reduce the current even further and you're going to get a surprise as to how much we can reduce the current going into the circuit. Uh, not much else to say or show in the setup. Um, this does show a 1.5 uh, volt um, peak to peak, 0 to 5 volt peak to peak. I've dropped it down to 3 because it kept on popping the LEDs. And um, now we seem to be okay. This one's um, lasted quite some time. Alright, um, I'll give you a little sneak peek at what happens. Uh, once again, we have 240 microamps, 250 and 24, 25 millivolts across our resistor. So they're all polarity correct. Um, nothing is asked about. I should run through the scope a little. I'm using the DC coupling on channel A and channel B and probes are both set at one time. Uh, so what we're going to do now is I'll just drop it down to a 3% duty cycle like so and I'll give you a quick little look see here. And that's where we're going to leave that. Um, and uh, we'll come back to this in the next video. We'll take it down to a 2% and then a 1% duty cycle. Check it all out. And uh, then we'll do some scope work across the whole circuit. Thanks for watching, guys.